Hello, what I'm going to talk about today is urbanization and the growth of cities and mega cities. Uh, basically, this is like a joining lesson between the population where we saw migration and also uh, looking at urban areas. So we're starting to move into the concept of like urbanization and some of the problems relating to urbanization. So what you will need to do is look at week five. I know this has spanned two weeks and click on the urbanization, the growth of cities and mega city notes. So what we can say once you've got the notes open is that over half the world's population live in urbanized metro metropolitan areas. And this has caused problems within the world. And what we've seen is that this has been a very rapid increase. And these urban areas can grow in two basic ways. The first way is by natural increase. What we were doing in, in um, the population section where you look at things like birth rates and death rates. Um, and the difference between those birth rates and death rates gives you natural increase. Or by immigration, mostly from rural areas. Okay. So there's been a number of trends with regards to the urban population. And what we can say with regards to those trends is basically... The actual proportion of the global population has increased significantly, often due to industrialization. Previously, before industrialization, we had a lot more agricultural based economies and people were more spaced out. Um, employment has changed. A lot of people work in industries or now in service industries based in cities. So we've seen a rapid increase. And as I put forward, that between 1850 and 2008, the number of people living in these urban areas has risen from two to almost 50%. And this is expected to reach about 60% by 2030. So also urbanization continues to increase steadily and the number and size of urban areas is growing rapidly. So we're seeing more cities and the size of those cities is increasing. One of the things that we can say in developing countries what we're seeing is population rise in uh, rural areas. And as the population rises in rural areas, this might be due to um, the coming together of a traditional society and an industrial society. What we're seeing is populations increasing and surviving in some of those rural areas. The land um, being unable to support people and people are leaving those areas looking for better, better work or um, just to sustain themselves and moving towards cities. And we're seeing this in many, many developing countries. The third factor is like urban areas are expanding rapidly in number and also in size. Sometimes like in developing countries, for example, what we're seeing is um, the size of cities in developing countries uh, rising rapidly. They have, often have fewer cities. Many sort of like cities are um, linked to say industrialization. If some of these countries are only just industrializing, they may have fewer cities. So the draw of those cities is immense. There's less choice of which city to go to. So these cities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So urban areas are expanding rapidly in both number and size. Each week, 1 million people are added to the world's urban areas. Okay. Every six days, 1 million people are added to the world itself. So between 2008 and 2019, the number of urban areas with a million or more people is projected to increase from 400 to 564. So that's significant, especially if there's environmental problems relating to cities. And there are 18 mega cities. Mega cities are those cities with a population of between 10 million or above in the city and the surrounding urban area. So in 1985, there was eight. Today, there's 15 with 11 of them in developing countries. Such mega cities will soon be eclipsed by what's termed a hyper city. A hyper city is a population of 20 million um, in the city and the surrounding urban areas. So far, we have places like Tokyo, who if you take the city and the surrounding urban areas, is over 20 million. Mumbai, which in 1985, Mumbai wasn't within the top 10, but has come up rapidly. 
as India has industrialized. So what we're seeing is a lot of the developing countries rising, um, developing country cities rising in size and reaching um, the million or 10 million as there's fewer cities. They're industrializing rapidly and the cities are growing rapidly. Urban growth is, however, is much slower in developed countries. Our cities are already have been around for a long, a long time. We're not building many new cities. OK, people who have urbanized, left the rural environment and come to the cities, left when we first industrialized or um, since that time. OK, if these countries are just industrializing now, what we're seeing is a lot more people leaving the rural areas and coming to cities. OK, so poverty is also becoming increasingly urbanized. And the United Nations estimates that one billion people in developing countries live in crowded and unsanitary slums and shanty towns within cities or on the outskirts. Often, a lot of developing cities, what you find is often the richer parts in the center. The further you go out, you start to see poorer and poorer areas. This is often very different to what we see in, in the developed world, where a lot of cities were developed around industry. So what we're seeing is um, also there's been rapid urbanization during the times of the, the original industrialization and, and industrial revolution. We saw rapid urbanization in the United States and hence we can classify the United States as an urbanized country with a vast majority of its population living in these urban areas. So what you need to do is read through these notes relate into urbanization in the United States. So what you need to do after you've read through these notes is make sure you watch the video relating to mega cities that are changing, um, changing in the world. And the next set of notes, which is important in this section, is urban sprawl. Basically, urban sprawl is the development of the uh, surrounding areas around cities. It is a low density development and as you know density is a number of people per square measurement and this is on the edge of towns and cities often removing agriculture or farms or wildland that's found on the edge of cities and replacing it with shops offices you've seen it housing developments highways and they're all linked up the reason why we've seen a lot of urban sprawl in the united states since the 1950s is we're a large country. There's ample land on the edge of many, many cities so that you could spread outwards. Um, there was loans for new family homes after World War II, especially for veterans. But they, these often came, these loans came with clauses in within them. They had to be used to buy homes that were single family homes. They had to be, um, they had to buy homes which were set back from the curbside. The developments often had single use. So what you would find is you had homes, but you didn't have stores. You had homes, but you didn't have schools. So you had to basically travel often using automobiles. OK, so this led to a growth in um, automobile ownership, but it also led to a greater use of a greater use of land and with regards to this, a lot of people couldn't get single family homes or ones which were set back from the curbside within a city. So people started building specific homes for um, these people returning from war. An example is Levittstown. OK, so you've got federal government loans for new single family homes for World War II veterans, which was supposed to stimulate development of the suburbs starting around the 1950s. We also got things like low cost gasoline in the United States. You might not think it, but if you look around the world, the price of gasoline is very, very low. Otherwise, this sprawl wouldn't have happened as as fast as it did. Also, you had the Highways Act, the state and federal funding of highways, often at the expense of other types of transportation. The rail network, how much of it is used to bring goods around your country nowadays? Is it as much as it was in the 1950s? 
Tax laws at the time encouraged home ownership. Most states and local zoning laws favored large residential lots and as I mentioned and separate the separation of residential and commercial areas. How do you get to stores if you live away from those stores? More people were buying cars. Most er urban areas consisted of multiple, multiple sort of like different political bodies. So you now had no overall plan for managing urban growth. You may find that one area built houses and a road and that that might lead to a building of maybe stores and those stores may be close to other stores because it's in a different political borough or area. Okay. So this is just some of the problems relating to it. We had this fast, rapid expanse onto land around the city. The land around the city was often used as farmland prior to this. So where is our food going to come from? What's the implications of all of this? So in a nutshell, urban sprawl is the product of affordable land, automobiles, cheap gasoline, and poor urban planning. It contributed to a number of, of environmental problems because of the existence or non-existence of, of adequate mass transportation in most of these areas. We have sprawls and people um, have been forced to drive more so after this, which has led to more things like more greenhouse gases, more air pollution. Okay, sprawl has decreased energy efficiency, increased con uh, traffic congestion. You think if you're coming into the city, how much congestion is there? Or as you get out of the city, you get to certain um, sprawl settlements, there's more and more congestion. Often these roads have been built on prime cropland, in forest areas, in wetlands, all this is habitat, food growing areas, things like this. So there's been some de um, definite problems relating to sprawl. And what we can say as you go through, it's also led to the decline or demise of many, many cities because you had the development of malls on the, in the suburbs, reliant on the automobile. Often it's caused a social imbalance where people ha don't have the access to stores anymore as these stores have moved out into the malls because of problems relating to taxes in the city, declining services in the city, congestion, but also <coughs> things like rents in the city and the, the inability to expand and unable to compete with these uh, mall developments. And there's many examples of where sprawl has taken place around the world. So you could look at the United States, but you can look at also parts of Europe, parts of Japan. OK, and what you'll need to do is an interesting news article about sprawl. If we look at this and the ability to be sustainable, but also I want you to look at the impact of sprawl. This will be useful when you come to um, taking test three. We're going to be looking at things like sprawl, okay? Urban sprawl, how um, this affects things like the health of people, okay? Communities are not walkable anymore. People are not walking as much, okay? We've become less mobile, effect, uh, um, become less mobile except for using things like automobiles, okay? So it's affected our fitness, our energy levels. Increased air pollution, so go through some of these. And the sprawling areas have affected natural and protected areas, our farming, our foods, our soils, you know, as we got more runoff, our water quality, as you have to link up more areas. There's also social and economic impacts on, like I said, the cities starting to decline, people moving out. Okay, there's also an imbalance in society with regards to sprawl. So you may may need to go through these notes and read and get an idea of it. Once you've done this, there is a video, next video relating to <coughs> urban sprawl. So what you need to do is watch this video. Okay. Donation right now to have your gift triple matched. Help us flip the sand.